Hey guys, so for today's video I'm going to be taking a quick look at Linux Mint 18.1 codenamed Serena. This is the 64-bit Cinnamon version and I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis at the beginning now because there's not going to be too much to this uh, sort of first impressions kind of review kind of thing that I tend to do here on this channel where I install a uh, distribution into a virtual machine, give it a run around for a couple of hours and let you know what the first impressions of it are. Uh, however, this is Linux Mint 18.1, which is an incremental improvement on Linux Mint 18, which is based on the latest long-term support release of Ubuntu, which is 16.04. So this review, if I was to do the, the usual format, would be almost identical to uh, Linux Mint 18's um, review. Uh, it has the same, basically, for the most part, the same packages in the repositories, and it has the same sort of design, design philosophy, the same kind of themes, the same kind of options. There are one or two incremental changes which I will talk about today, but for the most part, this video is just going to be a very, very, very quick and brief rundown to what Linux Mint 18.1 Serena is all about, some of the new things. Okay, so, as you can probably tell right off the bat, I've got the welcome screen here, which uh, is actually quite nice. I quite like it. It, it, it lets you know um, a lot of the key points to, to veer off to. This is, again, I think this is quite usual. This is... Uh, this is what we've come to expect. This is the update manager. Now, Linux Mint often has a lot of criticisms when it comes to the update manager, not allowing you to do things like update the kernel by default and all this kind of stuff. I like that, as in 18.0 or 18 and 18.1, this release, uh, you get to choose house, like basically safety versus security, which is, um, you know, it's, it's always open to interpretation because different use cases require different security. And... Um, you know, and, and and so forth. So that is good. It gives you, and it gives you a uh, a description as well. So that's nice. Won't bother with the updates just yet because again, this is just the first impressions. Um, this is the software manager. It looks pretty much exactly the same as last time around. It's a pretty good software manager. A lot of people tend to say that it looks a little bit dated or it looks a little bit basic, but. I think that it looks straightforward and kind of gets to the point. It might not necessarily be as visually polished as maybe the GNOME Software Center, but it does the job sort of just as well. Um, and I've had very few problems with it. Um, and it seems to be a little bit more lightweight than the Software Center, but that might just be me and my first impressions. Um, or my impressions, rather. Uh, this is the system settings. I, I will talk about one criticism. I did talk about it in Linux Mint 18. It comes with the Linux Mint Y theme selected as default, um, I, it seemed like they were going to, to decide for this release to be where they would unveil their new theme, which is installed as default, but is not um, is not selected as default. So I will just select it now. Uh, and this is it. So I can pull up, if I pull up the the file manager as well. See, one of the things I do not like about the, the new Mint Y theme is that it just doesn't have borders. Uh, you might be able to select some setting that allows shadows under it, which might separate the windows from each other. But uh, this, again, it, when you can see where the windows kind of bleed together because the theme is just that flat. And since this has been around for a couple of releases now, I'm going to, um, I'm going, I'm going to believe that the 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 window borders being invisible or not there is um, is by design, just as part of the the flat theme, which is. Uh, it's not ideal. You can always change themes. Themes never a particularly big deal. I'm always more concerned with what the out of the box theme is because that's a lot of people's first impressions. And Mint X, Mint X is a great is is really quite a nice theme. Um, where is Mint X there? Uh, and it looks really quite nice. Um, in my opinion, now I know some people think it looks a little bit dated. And if you install the base theme, this is a, a theme called um, Greybird or Greenbird. I. I I forget which one now. And it's based on a theme called Corebird, which um, is the default theme for Zubuntu, the XFCE version of Ubuntu. And for some reason, Corebird just doesn't look as polished as Greenbird, and I don't know what that is. Maybe it might just be the subtle changes, like the, the choices in colour and shading. Um, but there you go, that's one thing about Linux Mint, which I'm, you know... I, the, the Mint Y theme, I can't say I'm necessarily a massive fan of the lack of borders. In all other ways, I actually quite like it. Um, the thing that you've probably also noticed is that I've got the taskbar down the left-hand side here. It's uh, down at the bottom by default. 
Um, however, I just thought, well, you know, let's let's sort of demonstrate what it might look like now that we can actually have the taskbar on the side. That doesn't look too bad. If you can deal with icons without text labels, you can hover over each window and see a give, get a preview of it. Um, you can even hover over the show desktop just to make all the windows transparent so that you can see what it is you might be looking for. Uh, I don't necessarily consider this to be particularly useful because it's just as easy as click, click, but uh, but it's there. Um, so this is the, the new features on Cinnamon. This is Cinnamon 3.2 with the new screensaver setup. Um, it has crossfade animations on the background. So these are, these are definitely smaller, smaller things. Uh, and then, of course, yeah, you've got vertical panels here, which I'm sure you can do some pretty nice and creative stuff with them as well. Uh, I know that a lot of people prefer vertical panels because if you're on a laptop and you've got the touch uh, tracker pad, it's easier just to swipe to the left to to seek a menu and taskbars and, and and manage you know and, and management buttons rather than to sort of curl your finger down. So that's why a lot of people I know prefer the the vertical bars. Um, but again, you know, it's all. Uh, it's all uh, subjective. So it brings Qt 5.7 support, which is pretty good. Um, and I've, I've got to say, overall, and these, these by and large just seem to be incremental improvements uh, over, and then of course introducing more of the improvements to the X apps, which are really just very similar to the Mate apps, which we may start seeing more of in future editions. Um, but in short, this is just a an incremental improvement over traditional Linux uh, over Linux Mint 18. Uh, I'm going to just lay it out now. If you're running um, Linux Mint 18 and you're perfectly happy, the usual advice is: if it ain't broke, don't fix it, um, because this is uh, Linux Mint 18.1 is based on the same distribution as Linux Mint 18 is. So the improvements you'll get will be very fractional. If you're if you're burning for vertical toolbars or burning for the latest version of Cinnamon or something like that, then it might be worth upgrading. But if you're just happy, you know, um, moseying along with Linux Mint 18, stick with Linux Mint 18, quite possibly until Linux Mint 19 comes out in a couple of years' time. Linux Mint is designed it seems to be a very low maintenance distribution and they seem to be very good at doing that kind of thing so um i definitely uh, i definitely quite like it i do like how the, the vertical toolbars look um you might want to make some some adjustments you've got the um the, the clock here which is like 1642 which is um is readable but um actually that's quite narrow that actually works quite quite well you've got the um you can log out here and all that kind of stuff so i gotta say i do quite like cinnamon i there are times when i do wonder whether or not you know with cinnamon with budgie with mate with xfce and a lot of these desktop environments that in essence end up at, at the very you know very similar places it does seem like there is a massive abundance like back in the old days it used to be kde gnome maybe xfce and then you just start piecing stuff together from window managers back in the old day. But uh, but nowadays it seems like we've got more desktop environments than we could shake a stick at. Although that being said, a lot of these are not like separate desktop environments in their own right because a lot of the software that they use, you know, the text editors, the file managers, all that, all that kind of stuff, are either taken or borrowed from other desktop environments or they are... Um, very simply just uh, iterations of them. So it does seem that even though you've got all these different desktop environments, it does seem like a lot of them borrow from each other quite a lot. So it, they're not necessarily as separate as, as maybe KDE is from GNOME um, historically. Anyway, right, so what I've done here and why I've just decided to restart uh, is because uh, this in, in this installation I decided to encrypt the hard disk drive using the features in the install menu. Um, and this is what happens. So you just reboot and it comes up into uh, your, uh, what is effectively your, your splash screen here. And then you, you just type in a, a password that is, I'd imagine you have to give this to every single person that uses this computer. So this is like a point of use password. And then this just unlocks the um, the hard disk, the the, uh, the installation, the whole installation that Linux Mint has, has been installed in, which seems to be quite convenient and quite easy. So that's pretty good. And then uh, Linux Mint should just uh, pop open 
as it usually does. So that's not too bad. Um, bear in mind that the restart time, don't take that too seriously. I am, of course, running this in a virtual machine, so sometimes restart times can be quicker or slower than a bare metal install. Um, but overall, yeah, this is just the, the incremental improvements that we are used to seeing over Linux Mint, and um, quite happy to see it. So that's about it for me today. Um, feel free to give it a spin in a live CD, but unless you are burning for the latest version of Cinnamon or vertical panels, this is uh, this is this is just uh, this is just what to what we've come to expect from Linux Mint. A uh, lot high quality, incremental, and uh, you know sort of uh, n you know non drastic improvements over time. And I think that they've carved out quite a nice little niche for themselves. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.